Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was wondering the differences going from acting to actual directing, and whether or not you've had to direct yourself and it's had to feel weird. Uh, okay, I'll start. Um, it's it. Yeah, there is. I mean, you have to. You have to, when you're when you're acting, especially with a lot of the ADR that we do, where you just kind of go in and, and you know voice your character. Sometimes, very often, you only you only see your character. You only see the scenes that you're in. You know. Uh, as a director, you have to you're responsible for for every scene, for everything. So there is definitely uh, you know there's a lot more research, there's a lot more time that goes into it. Whereas if you're just doing voices, you'll show up. What are we doing today? And I'll hand you a script and you go. Um, transitioning from one to the other, I mean, I was an actor. I went to NYU and I had a degree in acting, and I did that, and then I ended up sort of backing into the anime industry because I you know when you're an actor and a, and a, and a, and a musician, because that's all I did was just sort of play with bands. And then, you know, you run out of money and you have to go get a job. And I ended up getting a job at CPM. And becoming a director, for me, was I just sort of assigned myself that job because they're like, I was producing, and they're like, well, we need to save money. I'm like, well, let me direct these things and cut out the middleman. And actually, I mean, as I love the voice acting. And it is, as far as the bang for your buck, it's, it's great because you show up, you work, and you're gone. But like. Directing projects is really something I've felt more pride after the fact on projects that I've directed. You can step back and look at the whole thing. And as Colleen was just saying, there's all these little pieces that you have to kind of make work in harmony. And, and you have to create things, man. You have to sort of create this magic because it's like these people who are not in the same room, they're not really talking to each other, and yet you create this sort of cohesive chemistry. And, and it is, I don't know, it's a lot of fun, so. I think, uh... One thing I would say is I learned very quickly that I <laughs> that I wasn't good at the micromanagement of direction. Uh, going from being an actor where you're not responsible for anything, you just come in and your job is to do what the director tells you to create their vision. Uh, as a director, you have to have the entire vision in your head and then create it with people who are or are not prepared to help you. Uh, and then the producer is a more macro management uh, position. I really, really like the non-management acting and the macro management producing. The micro management makes my head go boom. It is, I, I don't, I, everybody gets really stressed out when I'm directing. So I, I, like, I like the two of these. She is excellent at the micro management of direction. <laughs> She's very cool. I'm very laid back, and I've been doing this for such a long time. I think that having such a, a vast amount of experience voice acting really helps as a director because you have the ability, like working with so many directors, I know how to communicate with an actor. I know what to say to make them understand what I'm trying to get from them, whereas some directors, I've worked with directors that are really bad that don't really know how to tell you to get a certain reaction out and that frustration that comes with it and then the whole thing just sucks and as an actor you're like, I'm totally off, so I know not to be that person. Um, also, I think one thing that has helped me immensely is the writing. I was a writer for a long time before I started directing and just being able now, if I take a script and something doesn't match, I don't freak out and go, ah, it's not working, I just rewrite it. I just completely rewrite it. That's something that I think helps with the micromanagement aspect of it, yeah. you know, because when you've, you've written things, then you really get to know all yeah. the little bits on an intimate level, yeah, so it doesn't seem maybe so daunting a task. Yeah, we've all done all of those things, haven't we? Yeah. We're all actors, writers, directors, yeah. That's right. So people. <laughs> but somebody, I think somebody else asked about directing yourself. Did you, I think that was part of it? Somebody said, but, and, and that's, yeah. Uh, I don't, I tend to not do that, like, I don't, I would never put myself in a lead role in a show that I'm directing, because it's, it's just, I don't know, I just, I don't like to do that, because I, I you need the checks and balances, you know, you need someone, as focused as you might be with it in your head, you need someone else's eyes and ears on it, uh, I certainly play, you know, minor roles in, most of the shows that I direct, I mean, I do stuff in Pokemon all the time now and whatever, but I mean, I would never cast myself in the lead part. I don't know if either of you have ever been in that situation. I, I really am not a fan of that either. Uh, there is a situation like, for instance, I'm going to Australia for convention, so I have to find somebody to, to direct in my place, like a subdirector, and I'm going to let Todd Habercorn go in and record himself and direct himself as Watanuki. 
for the sole purpose of my options are bringing in somebody that knows little to nothing about the show and having them direct him, or having the guy that plays the lead role and knows the most about the show direct himself, in which case I will ask Todd if it's okay, or do you want to direct it yourself, he should be cool with that, knowing that he has a better idea of how the show's going and what the character's doing, but I would never, I would never cast myself as a lead and then do that, I think that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> It, like you said, you do need the checks and balances. You need there to be somebody out there who's going, okay, that doesn't sound right. This sounds better. It's hard to direct yourself, too. Like, that's another thing. Is it's not it's not easy because you can't hear. There's a, there's a big difference between what is in here and what comes out here. And as an actor, you don't always know that what's in your head is coming out of your mouth until you hear it back. And so it, it's really long and complicated process when you're Hi, um, I was wondering, um, and this is probably more directed at you, um, how it feels um, different from having to deal with standards and practices on television regarding to stuff that's going to be released on uh, back in the day VHS and now on DVD only. Um, having to deal, you know, like with the network, or do you set yourself more of a guidelines and don't have to deal with the network? Most of the, any like changes that have to be made, most of that is, I mean, that's done before you start recording the show. That's with the writing and if they have to edit the video. There are certain changes that have to be made just based on uh, the runtime of the show in Japan is 24 minutes, in the United States 22 minutes, based on commercial breaks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Most of that is taken out of the opening and closing. You know, uh, so like Pokemon uh, plays on Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network's standards are a little different if you play something on like big network TV, like on Fox, it's 22 minutes and there's like, you know, it's like th a three-act format, but on cable, it's a two-act format. You know how like Spongebob has like a 12-minute or an 11-minute episode, a break, and then another 11-minute episode? Pokemon is broken up like that, which I do in Japan, which is like first act, second act, as opposed to, you know, stuff like the, say like the new Spider-Man or something that is on, you know, the CW, I think, which is first, second, third act. So there are cuts that are sort of dictated there. That's all stuff that I don't really deal with, like, because what I get, they're just like, here, direct this. You know, I don't have to make those cuts. In terms of the freedom of what you can say, the home video stuff was, was great, because, and I don't know if you guys ever deal with this, or even with, with One Piece or any of that, but there were, like, certain things that they tell you, like, you know, uh, Magical Door I Me mean, was a bunch of third grade kids, you know, a lot of them in classrooms and stuff, and they pick on each other, and you want to call somebody like a spaz or something. Because spaz is funny, and it's not really that insulting, but they're like, no, no, you can't say spaz. Like, well, why? And I'm like, yeah, because the contingent of, like, spastic audience members are going to write you hate mail, you know? Um, but, like, spaz and lame, those... Yeah, jeez. And well, anything, yeah, I just used to want to sneak that in there every time some panic is going on. Somebody being like, Jesus, save me! <laughs> you know, but that you can't, you can't, like, oh my God, and you can't do it, you know? And that's fine. I mean, they have their rules, because the thing is, ultimately, at least the way I felt about this, as restrictive as some of that national TV audience stuff can be, that's what you want. You want the national TV game. You want, you know. You want your show and your work to be out there for everybody to see. Some of the best stuff I've ever worked on is straight-to-video stuff that, unfortunately, nobody's really gotten to see. There's a show called Now and Then, Here and There. I love and that, it's a, Yeah, I love it, too. And there's another one called The Ping Pong Club, which is to see that. which is freaking hilarious. But, like, nobody will ever see no one will ever really see them. They were straight-to-DVD. But the freedom that we had in creating them made them as good as they were because, you know, you can't have nine dick jokes per minute, you know, on Saturday morning, you know what I mean? But when you go straight to DVD, you can. And also, like, I've worked on, as most of you probably know, I've worked on a bunch of hentai, which turns the freedom knob up to 11, where you can pretty much do whatever you want, and that, that was always great, sort of offsetting that with uh, the, the mainstream Saturday morning stuff, uh, all the jokes that I couldn't make in my kids show and like, ah, I'm gonna make them all here, you know. Um, yeah, I love the idea of you directing kids shows that <laughs> That is, and see, that's the thing, is that's what everybody thinks, that that's all I, like, sit there and work on hentai, but I don't, I actually haven't worked on hentai in, like, over two years, and basically what I do is all that other stuff, and then, you know, I mean, but again, you know, for me, it's, it's a business, and that's where the work is, and, you know, I got mortgage payments, and,